Hey guys, and welcome back to another video of ours. In today's video, we're gonna be discussing all about low content versus medium content versus high content books on Amazon KDP. And we get asked this a lot to us with you, don't yeah. we? Um, what's the difference that people, when they're coming into KDP, they hear all these different terms, low, medium, and high content, yeah. and they're not really too sure uh, what they are. So that's what we're gonna cover in today's video. Sweet. Let's just go ahead and get right into it. Yeah, so let's get into it. I guess first we're just going to kind of talk through what low content is. So this is probably one of the ones that people hear of most often because it's things like journals, notebooks, mm. planners, um, you know, the things that are literally pr pretty much what it sounds like. So low content just means less content, essentially. So things with either no to little to no content. That didn't make sense. No. <laughs> so, so things with pretty much, yeah, just less content in them. So, um the reason that these are probably the most commonly heard about are because they're the ones that have, um, they're just the easiest to put together because of the lack of content. So like a journal, all you have to do is get like pages with lines on it, you know, or like a planner, you have to, um, same kind of idea. It's like re repetitive pages with them. Yeah, pretty much nothing in them. So that's why they're so easy to put together and why they're so common. And there's three kind of overarching, maybe four actually, overarching uh, sub niches within low or no content. Uh, books. You've got journals, planners, notebooks, and probably logbooks as well is, yeah. is the other one. Um, and, and this is probably the kind of area of self-publishing people most commonly get started with mm -hmm. is because, um, as you said, it's very, very easy to put together mm -hmm. and low cost, and therefore a lot of people rush into it. Um, so we just typed into um, Amazon here, journal, and you can see lots of different journals come up with a, a wide variety of uses, basically. Um, and then obviously you can be much, then you can narrow down and niche down as we call it to get more specific and uh, target a specific um, kind of area within the journal, like sub niche, can't you? Because mm -hmm. um, if you just did a, a journal, it's, it's not going to be able to be found on Amazon, is it? Yeah, there's literally tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands, maybe. I don't know. There's a lot of journals, basically. So if you're not niching down at all, then it's bound to get lost in for the sea of other journals. Exactly. For example, this one here, prime example of niching down a prayer journal for women. So it's not just a journal, it's now a prayer journal, but also for women. Um, so that's niched down quite well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so that's a prayer journal, <laughs> uh, an inner fucking peace journal. So another way you can kind of niche down. So that's, you know, you can pretty much do that for any sort of journal. Um, think of a more specific uh, target audience you can actually target. Mm -hmm. uh, same is true for daily planner. Uh, so this is, well, the, uh, overarching uh, sub niche will be the planner but then you can target down you said earlier then you said daily, daily planners weekly yeah. monthly planners or this is a really good example as well right. adhd daily planner it's i mean to be honest it's probably not much different from other planners but targeting down kind of makes people think it's you know more for them specifically yeah. so that kind of a sloth daily planner maybe <laughs> um and then just finally here is a notebook as well um, so same principles apply to journals and uh, notebooks. You can niche down. So for example here, um, they've niched down by having a college ruled composition notebook. Um, and you can even niche it down further by uh, a size dimension. Uh, for example, 8.5 by 11. Um, so that's your low content and no content. We kind of group low content and no content together um, just because there's not too much difference between a low and no content book. Um, so that's low content, no content. So next we have medium content. Yeah, so medium content are, again, so, uh, the names are actually kind of self-explanatory, to be honest, yeah. but they they also aren't in a way. So medium content are going to be the books that are in the middle, obviously, of medium and, or sorry, in the middle of high content and low content. So things that have more in them than low content that are a bit harder to put together have a bit more content in them. So first example is going to be coloring books. So um, again, these are just going to have obviously individual pages that have more than just like lined paper in them. So each page is going to be obviously a different coloring pattern or kids activity books, for example. So these are going to be things like, as you can see on this one, there's like mazes and like word searches and stuff. So yeah, just a bit more actual content within them and they take a bit more effort obviously to put together and potentially more resources, but that's kind of the gist of that. And then also... And I would just say with medium content as well. Um, these are not really your books that you'd actually open up and read. They are more your books that, they're more like doing books. Yeah. I, I kind of think of them as, for example, Sudoku, crossword, um, yeah. activity books, coloring books, those things that you actually do. Um, and hence mm -hmm. they're gonna take a little bit more um, effort to put together. Effort to put together. Um, so yeah, uh, that's some a few ideas of medium content. What are the medium content books are there? For example, like workbooks. 
uh, crosswords, yeah. um, Sudoku, activity books. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of your meeting content. Mm-hmm. And then finally, a, a very large part of self-publishing on Amazon is your high content books. Yeah, those are going to be kind of like Chris just said, they're going to be the ones that you are going mm-hmm. to be opening up and reading. So um, for us, we specifically do nonfiction books. So it's going to be things that are kind of more sort of... Um, learning how to books and like DIY books and there there obviously are other ones as well but those are kind of like the main overarching ones for nonfiction. You, um, you can have high uh, high content fiction books as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we just can, don't specialize yeah. in that. Exactly, yeah. Um but yeah, so they're going to be books that you're actually going to be sitting down and reading. So like chapter books almost. So they obviously take much more time and effort to put together and um depending on the route you go down, more money as well. But um, there's less competition inherently just because they do take more effort to put together. So a lot of people who are doing low content, and this is not a dig at low content at all, but a lot of people who are doing low content are kind of just looking to make a quick buck and looking to do the least amount of work possible. Mm. And while there is money to be made in low content, um, there's just less competition in high content. So it's in some ways, uh, I don't want to say easier, but there's just more money to be made there because there is less competition. Yeah, so that's kind of a general overview of low, medium, and high content. Uh, what we're going to do now is just cover some pros and cons of each. Um, so we kind of already touched them a little bit, um, but just for clarity, so uh, low and no content. Uh, the main pro of doing these sort of books are they're easy and they're fast to put together. And, and you can do them also for a very low cost. Oh, yeah, you, and, and low cost as well. Uh, so low barrier to entry. Um because with tools, um, and we'll get into this in a little bit, um, but tools like Canva and, and BookBolt, you can create a, a low content book very, very quickly, um, probably within a couple of days or so. Mm-hmm. Um, however, the cons, as Angelina's already said, of low content, no content books are the competition factor. Because more people are doing them, because they're very easy to do, mm-hmm. and that low bar- very low barrier to entry, um, inherently, it's going to mean there's more competition in the low content niche. So some people, we, we, we see this a lot to be honest with you, when they're first starting self-publishing, they try a few low content books, it doesn't work out, and they just kind of say that self-publishing on Amazon doesn't work. It's because they're entering probably the most challenging part or challenging area of uh, self-publishing on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Um, medium content books. So the main pros of medium content books are that there's less competition, and it's a very, very underserved niche of self-publishing people tend to think about low content no content content, or maybe high content and medium content sort of kind of flies under the radar um and another pro i I put down or i thought of was that it's actually quite fun to put together i personally quite enjoy putting medium content books like activity books together um and yeah that's pretty the main pretty main pros um uh, what, what are the cons of medium content then? Um, yeah, so the cons are probably going to, there are, I guess, a few. So first and foremost, I guess, usually with books like that, you're going to have a lower profit margin because um, activity books are not usually priced as high as high content books. Um, we we and, usually price a maximum of twelve ninety nine for medium content books. So your royalty is usually maximum about yeah. $5, $5.50. And it does also kind of depend as well, though, because sometimes... Um, your page count is obviously going to be different for every book. So it does, so that does also kind of factor in. But generally speaking, your comp, your profit margin is mm. going to be lower. And then in terms of like getting reviews for these books, um, so with your high content books, it's a lot easier to send out a PDF of a book that people can read. Whereas with activity books and like workbooks and that sort of thing, obviously people actually want to use that as Chris said they're sort of like doing books so it's kind of hard to send a pdf of a workbook to someone um I guess you could obviously but then they would have to print out the pages themselves so it's just a little bit harder because of that um Mm. you can still use websites like pubby to get reviews on those and some people will still be okay with it but usually it's just easier with a with a high content book because it's easier for someone to receive a pdf and just be able to read it as opposed to you know sending somebody pages that they can then print out not that it's impossible or anything like that, but just sometimes can be slightly harder. Um, and then... Then high content. So the yeah. pros of high content book, as we've already kind of touched on, less is there's less, com- there's less yeah. competition. That's the big one, really. And, and that's because people, a lot of people online, they don't want to do the necessary work in order to actually you know, create a very, very high quality book. Mm-hmm. So that kind of weeds out people who don't want to do any work. Um, and there is a slightly higher bar- barrier to entry because um, it does cost more to actually produce a high content book. Yeah. Obviously, in our opinion, it will definitely pay off in the long term, um, but there is that side to it as well. Um, what's another pro to high content is the profit margin. So yeah. 
with your low content, you're probably going up to about a $9.99 price point, $9.99. With medium content, it's $12.99. With high content, we normally maximum price at $16.99, $17.99, but some people um, will go up to $25.99, even $29.99 for a book. It also just depends on the niche as well. It does sure, depend on the niche, which, yeah. Which, like, if you, um, obviously, you, usually the way you base your price is because of the niche that you're in. So if you're mm. picking a high price niche, then that obviously yeah. gives you leeway to price your book higher as well. So... Mm. Um, yeah, but definitely way higher profit margin. But if you have it selling at uh, seventeen ninety nine, then your mm -hmm. royalty is going to be kind of nine, maybe ten dollars per book. Um, it's just because the higher you price it, the more your royalty goes up because the less the printing cost will affect your royalty. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, obviously the, you know, you're going to be making more money from higher content books, and that's kind of why we prefer to high content publish. We do recommend to have a split portfolio between low, medium, and high content but 80% of our money will come through high content books. Mm. And the last pro of high content books are that you can convert it into an audiobook yeah. and sell it on Audible, um, which is an absolute massive and hugely growing market. Um, and you can't really change a low content or a medium content into an audiobook. Yeah. So there's big pros as to why you should yeah, be doing definitely. high content it's just, books. It's just an extra stream of income from something that yeah. you've already created. So the only next step is really to get it narrated. And mm. um, yeah, it's just kind of a no brainer, I think, to Absolute also no put it on Audible. If you've already created the book, you may as well mm. um, get it turned into an audiobook too. And for us, uh, we've been doing this for four years now. Uh, for the first three, three and a half years, all we did was KDP and we kind of loosely got, or very half heartedly, I should say, got yeah. our books converted into an audiobook and didn't make too much money. Um, on those audiobooks um, but in the last kind of six months or so maybe a bit longer than that we've really kind of seen the potential that audio uh, audible has um, <laughs> and the market is absolutely massive over there yeah. um, so that's another reason yeah a big reason why you should uh, try high content and then get it converted yeah. um, in terms of the cons so it's more effort yeah. more timely um, and more does resources, and more resources yeah. basically they're the main cons of, of high content publishing Hope that's helpful. So we're going on to now. It, we're quickly going to cover um, just how you, you, some different methods how you'd actually put these books together. So first of all, low content books. How do we? Just, yeah, uh, low content again are the easiest ones. So. Do you want book up? Oh yeah. So, um, so low content are the easiest ones really to put together. Um, to be honest, there are several different ways that you can do this, kind of depending on your own um, skill set as well. So for things like. Yeah, they don't have it anymore. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Just, just, just go again. Um, uh, yeah, so low content are uh, obviously, like we said, again, they're the easiest ones to put together. So depending on your own personal skill set, you can um, do this in a couple different ways. Um, we've always personally just used Canva because we have found it the easiest and we pay for a Canva subscription. So we know that all the images and stuff that we use are going to be um, licensed. So that for us is just easier. And there are a lot of like little tricks and stuff that you can do with Canva to create really high quality low content books. Um, and they also do have templates as well that you can use and then obviously just change. Sure. For low content books, like I said, we we mostly use Canva. Um, we think it's honestly a pretty like straightforward way to do it. But just as like a b very brief overview, um, we will bring out videos in the future kind of showing in much more detail how to actually produce these books. But for the sake of this video and not keeping it too long, um, we'll just kind of show you briefly what you can do. So um, again, depending on what kind of low content book you're making, if you're just doing like a lined notebook, then that is pretty like self-explanatory. You can just put a bunch of lines on the page. Um, and you can also, so Canva does have the, all of these templates. You're not allowed to use these templates exactly. They have, that's kind of like against their T's and C's. You're not allowed to just use it as is, but you can use them as like a base, sort of as inspiration, and then obviously change it, kind of make things differently, add designs to it, whatever you want to do, that changes it. But you can't use the templates exactly as is, just as a note. Um, but yeah, so basically you can use these types of pages and then you can just like duplicate the page. Um, and if you want to duplicate them all at once or whatever to just make a really quick and easy notebook, you can select all the pages and you can select multiple by holding on shift. And then you can um, right click and press duplicate three pages and just keep doing that. Or you can use the hotkeys command D that does the same thing. Um, but basically, yeah, so that's like a very quick and easy example. Another place that you can also use for low content is um, book bolt. So we personally have never actually used this um, only because we have always found found Canva, honestly, to be sufficient, at least for the types of books that we've made. Um, we have just never really found the need really to use BookBolt, but it is a great resource for those who are like looking to specifically do low content books. Um, and it's got like kind of everything you need in one really as well. Like it's got 
um, analytics and like research tools as well as the actual um, native interior designer thing that they have. So it's a great resource for that. Um, and you can use them for some medium content books as well, like puzzles. Yeah, so that's low content and no content. So fairly uh, self-explanatory to actually make them. Uh, so next up is medium content books. So these are your coloring books, your puzzle books, your activity books, your crosswords, Sudoku's, etc. Um, so we usually do make these in Canva as well. Um, mm. But you need obviously uh, the the content inside them. So the Sudoku puzzle, for example. So a really good place to actually get these done is a website called Two Line Prints. And this is usually, usually where we go to for all of our medium content books, to be honest with you. There is a cost to um, it. So it's $15 or $16 for three days. And usually we just go for this plan because that is more than enough time um, to get these books created. And then after you just obviously can't the subscription and you don't pay any more than that. Um, so all you do is, for example, if you're doing a crossword book, you'd make your crossword here. Obviously, you can play around with it, um, how many um, clues or how many uh, answers or solutions there are. Uh, you can just download it as a PNG with the solution. Once you've done that, you can then import it um, into your Canva page here, um, and then it's pretty much done. So that is for the activity book side of things. Um, the only other uh, medium content book which you can't do on um, two line prints is the coloring book. So for coloring books, there's kind of two ways you can do this. First of all, you can go to a stock image uh, website, for example, Shutterstock or iStock, which is really, really good for coloring book uh, images. And um, you pay a subscription to that. Um, once you pay the subscription, you can then use their, um, their, their images for your coloring book. Obviously, you need to have a theme, first of all, for your coloring book. It can't just be random. So for example, if you're doing a Christmas, if you're doing a Christmas book, uh, if you're doing a Christmas book coloring book, um, then obviously you need to think about just Christmas book images. Um, and then the same thing, you can download them and then input it into, uh, into Canva. Um, so that's medium content books. And then just finally is our high content books. Yeah, high content. So again, high content are going to be the ones that take the most effort and time and also resources really to put together. So um, there are a few different ways that you can get high content books created. And for the sake of this video, again, and not keeping it too long, basically, we'll just kind of walk you through the steps. But basically, what you're going to do is obviously your keyword research, first of all. And then once you've got your book topic, the way to actually produce it is you need to create an outline for that book, which is kind of just like a list of chapters. But within each chapter, it's going to be much more broken down. You're going to have your subsections um, within each chapter. Um, to have your sort of skeleton for the book. And then once you have that done, you can send it off to a ghostwriter. So two companies that we recommend are the Urban Writers and Hot Ghostwriter. Um, we'll link these down in the description below. But basically, um, you can send it off to them and get it ghostwritten. They'll do the whole thing for you, basically. You just give them the outline and any other instruction that you want to give them, and then they'll write the book. Um, it usually takes about six weeks to do that. Um, and you can also now use ChatGPT to write the book, but there is a caveat and sort of a disclaimer there. You shouldn't just be, you know, going to ChatGPT and asking it to write an entire book for you. That's not how it works, and it won't give you a good piece of work if that's what you do. You have to really section it out, and then also the most important thing, I would say, is adding human sentiment and really editing everything that comes out of it. You should never really copy and paste from um you should never really copy and paste from chat gpt straight into your manuscript um that's just not really a good idea ever you should always add human sentiment and change it and make it sound good so um those are kind of your two ways are getting it ghostwritten or using chat gpt and then once that's done you'll also have to get a book cover created and then kind of put everything together to upload onto kdp so um yeah, yeah that kind of gives it a breakdown uh, of the three different uh books and how to make them and yeah. one just really important point for um, it goes for all the books low content no content medium content high content is the importance of advertising and marketing in the same yeah. way uh, so what we often see with low and no content publishers they will put let's say 20 books up uh, i hope they sell and when it doesn't sell they get disappointed mm -hmm. um the truth is for all of these books well, no matter what book you do you need to have uh, a sufficient reviews in it at least 30 reviews on every single book that you publish in order to actually make any sales um, you need to have an advertising campaign up and running this is to show amazon that your book's worthy of selling so you, advertising will essentially get your book into in front of the right people and um, without it you won't get many sales and finally make sure your book's page is optimized what we mean by this is there's a plus content there's a good description um, and there's hopefully a picture of you or two um, to really help the sales and um, so that's kind of that that goes across the board, the board doesn't yeah, it definitely 
Yeah, so hopefully that was helpful, guys. Um, we have actually recent, well, literally today, <laughs> we started a new Facebook group, a free Facebook group for, it's going to kind of hopefully grow into a nice community, a support group, basically, for self-publishers. It's going to grow into a nice community, you know, hopefully for self-publishers. So feel free to join that down below. Um, the link, again, will be in the description, and hopefully we'll see you inside there. But otherwise, um, we will be putting out um, plenty more videos in the coming days slash weeks. So hopefully you guys are finding value in them, and let us know in the comments if there are any specific topics mm. that you want us to cover um but yeah otherwise we will see you guys in the next video